my next guest really needs no introduction, Maria Emmerich. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, I'm usually not nervous up here, but I have two little cuties in the front seats watching me and I wanna serve them well. But I wanna say thank you to Brian and Robin for putting on such a great event. Isn't this fun? Yeah, right? Um, and thank you for getting me out of the woods onto stage, out of my uh, flip-flops and cutoffs. I'm so honored to be here, and today I'm gonna talk to you about oxidative priority. And oxidative priority sounds a bit like a biology class, and it kind of is, but I'm gonna break it down into simple science so you can understand everything about how your bodies work and how to efficiently lose weight on a ketogenic diet by switching up your macronutrients, maybe just a little bit. Um, so for me, maybe you don't know my story, maybe you do, but when I was about 16 years old, I went to the doctor because I wasn't feeling well. I didn't even tell my parents I was going. Um, when I left that appointment, I was told that I had PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. I had IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, acid reflux, um, depression. I was given three prescription drugs that day, but I swear that it was fate that had me take my dog, she was a beautiful golden retriever, but she was losing patches of her hair, to the vet. And the first question the veterinarian asked me was, what are you feeding her? And that question was never brought up to me by my doctor. Now we know all of these things about carbohydrates and sugar and caffeine causing problems with PCOS, but she told me that that was just the cards I was dealt. That was just my body. Um, but thankfully, my dog saved my life because I changed my diet as well as hers, and I never filled those prescription drugs. For me, weight loss was very difficult, but the depression lifted right away. And that's what kept me on the diet. Um, the reason why I have the words addiction up there is something that really upsets me. When someone is trying to cut alcohol or cigarettes, what happens? Everybody's very respectful, right? They don't even want to drink around you. They want to encourage you to stop. But if you say, I'm not eating sugar anymore, what happens? Your mom makes you your favorite pie, right? You know? And it's just like, no, I'm sick. Like, I'm trying to get healthy. This is a good thing. Don't be triggered by my changes. But that's what happened to me. Um, so we're gonna play a little game. This is not the is it healthy game. This is is it keto game, all right? Is that keto? Yeah. Is it keto? Yes. Is it keto? On Instagram it said it was keto. Is that keto? Yes, woohoo. Is that keto? I did not say, is this the healthy game? <laughs> is it keto? You'll probably read ketosis, yes. A bunch of fat on white rice. Yes, it is. If you put enough fat on white rice, you will read ketosis. Is it healthy? No. Is that keto? Yes. You'll probably have your highest ketosis numbers with an empty plate. Not the healthy game, is it keto? It is. There's a lot of crap out there, be careful. Is it keto, chicken breast? It is. Is it keto? <laughs> it's not the healthy game, it is keto, but it's not healthy, right? It's my favorite picture. Is it keto? Who has made my protein noodle lasagna? If you've never, if you're new to keto, never tried a recipe before, you go to my website, search protein noodle lasagna. My kids could eat that all the time. It's awesome. Um, so what are your goals? I had the great opportunity to speak in Russia about the ketogenic diet. He was a doctor for epilepsy. That diet for keto will look very different than it does for weight loss, okay? So I wanna make this clear. Keto's great for so many things, and you're all here for a variety of reasons. Kudos to you. But I'm gonna talk about weight loss, because I will say most people come to me for that. Um, 
So today's focus, weight loss. All right. So oxidative priority. This is what we're going to talk about today. I can't really, OK. I usually look at the side. But um, we're going to talk about alcohol. We're going to talk about exogenous ketones. We're going to talk about carbohydrates, protein, and fat, and how we break down all of those. So I'm, this slide, I'm going to break down. So number one is alcohol. Do not kill the messenger. I am from Wisconsin, which is like beer capital of the world. Yes. All right. But I want you to know what happens. We all know that it's totally toxic, so we have to burn that first. It's oxidative priority number one because there's no storage site. Um, you get about 15% thermogenesis um, from alcohol, but it also messes with your hormones. We talk a lot about hormones, and you know, weight loss is all about hormone manipulation, and it is. But what happens when you drink alcohol is it decreases testosterone, which we don't want to happen in women either. So I find it interesting that people will often work out really hard um, Saturday morning so they could drink for Saturday night, right? But what happens if you lift weights, you understand that when you lift weights, you're breaking down your muscles and you repair them as you rest. So you don't want less testosterone at that moment because you're going to have less muscle because you're just breaking it down. It also increases estrogen by 300%. Yes, 300%. And that's why a big beer belly is not a beer belly. It's an estrogen belly. Don't kill the messenger. And it's not biologically needed. OK? Exogenous ketones. Again, don't kill the messenger. I'm just telling you the facts. And this is oxidative priority number two because it's very, there's very little to no storage capacity. It's not biologically needed. It's very expensive. And your body can make all the ketones it's needed when you're keto adapted. So if you're caught up on a higher ketone number, don't be. Mine are actually really low. But that's because I just ran a bunch of miles in a fasted state. When you're exercising, you might notice that your ketones get lower, and that's because there's less in your bloodstream. You're using them for your energy. Is that a bad thing? Don't get too like, stressed out. Like, my ketones aren't high enough for weight loss. That's not true. Okay? Don't get stressed out about that, because you can add a bunch of MCT oil to anything and read higher ketones. Are you going to lose more weight? Absolutely not. But people are caught up with that number. Carbohydrates is oxidative priority number three. Um, there's a moderate storage capacity site, about you know, 1,200 to 2,000 calories. It's the highest amount of insulin needed to utilize, and it's not very satiating and usually causes hunger. Um, it's not biologically needed. Um, you can make all the glucose you need when you're keto adapted. Um, and we just had a great presentation by my husband, Craig, about the gut flora. You do not need carbohydrates for gut flora. You do not need them. Um, protein is oxidative priority number four. There's a limited storage capacity site, but you get this 25% um, thermic defect of food. Okay, so you're like, get the meat sweats, you know? You have the barbecue and you get the meat sweats. Um, it's preferentially used for muscle protein synthesis um, and building lean mass. It's very expensive um, to use glucose um, for fuel unless, or for, use protein for fuel as glucose. Um, and it only does that if there's nothing else available. And it's biologically essential. I get messages just about daily like, Maria, I'm losing my hair. Um, a lot of women complaining about that with keto. And my first question, are you doing fat bombs, fat fast, or an egg fast right now? Because if you're doing that, you're not hitting your protein goal. And your hair follicles, amino acids, that's what this built from. Your thyroid needs a bunch of amino acids. That comes from animal protein. It doesn't come from fat. OK? Um, fat is oxidative priority number five. Theoretically, there is an unlimited storage capacity site. It's the smallest amount of insulin needed to utilize. Yes, it will rise a little bit, um, enough to sp stop lipolysis or break a fast. It's moderately satiating calorie for calorie. Um, and it's biologically essential for hormones such as, you know, um, vitamins A, D, E, and K, your progesterone, estrogen, all of those good hormones that you want. You need that with fat. Um, the reason why I say it's moderately satiating cal calorie for calorie because you're looking at a much bigger number than you would for protein. Um, so why keto can be so helpful for weight loss? Number one, alcohol. We're going to get rid of that because we know it's not needed, right? 
Number two, we're going to get rid of that because we don't need exogenous ketones. You cannot eat the darn muffin and take that and still tell yourself that that is healthy, right? Um, get rid of the carbohydrates. You don't need them. There's nothing needed about carbohydrates. And you hit your protein goal, which is about 0.8 times your lean mass. On average, it's like 80 grams for a female. And then fat. You don't need to add fat just to add fat. I get people all the time, well, I did a shot of MCT oil because I didn't hit my fat percentage. Ah! No. If you are already overweight and you want to use your body fat for fuel, let it. This is the whole idea of fasting. You're using your body fat for ketosis, right? Um, the thermic effect of food. So when you look at the th what, how many calories you're going to burn depending on what you eat, alcohol has 15%. Don't go and drink alcohol thinking it's high, okay? Um, ketones is only 3%. Protein is 25%, so if you eat 100 calories of that, you really only net 75 calories. Carbohydrates, out of 100, you get 92, and then fat, out of 100, you get 97. So for example, first of all, you're not fasting if you have a bulletproof coffee, because you just had 500 calories. But you hear that all the time. I do, I'm on the phone all the time with clients, they're like, well, Maria, I don't eat until 2. I'm like, so what did you put in your mouth before that? Well, a bulletproof coffee. Well, first of all, caffeine. We won't really get into that, but that's a no-no in my idea. Um, but fat. You're not fasting if you have 500 calories of fat. And the thing is, is if you have a sirloin steak instead, first of all, it's way more delicious. And when you drink your calories, they're so quickly absorbed into the bloodstream um, and it's not very satiating. When you chew your food, it registers different uh, hormones and signals in your brain to tell you that you're satisfied, that you're full, that it was delicious. I mean, you could throw down calories like nothing. Um, but also, with the sirloin steak, with that thermic effect of food, you're really only getting to get 104 calories versus 485, or 401, uh, versus 485, the Bulletproof Coffee. Always chew your food instead of drinking your calories. I get the coffee addiction. I worked at coffee shops since I was 15 years old. I had that coffee addiction. That's what caused a lot of illnesses. You know the muffins and the scones that didn't sell that day? I got to go home with them, and I did. That's what caused me to be sick, the mochas, the muffins, all of that. Um, so I had to cut caffeine in order to totally heal, and it took a really long time to cut that caffeine out. I think most people would say, oh, Maria, I'll cut the dairy before I cut caffeine any day. Um, so protein sparing modified fast. Um, if you didn't know, I do have a book about this. You're getting rid of all of the carbohydrates. It's basically a carnivore diet without being high fat, without adding the butter, without adding the sauces um, and things like that. It keeps you satiated while reducing calories. A lot of people are like, so you're carnivore now? It's like, well, it's not anything new. I've been writing about it for a long time, um, but I just never really called it that. Um, how to go keto. So doing keto the right way. Um, there's Mr. Kai. Isn't that cute? <laughs> He's my jokester. Um, so how do I get keto adapted? Um, focus on two things. Keep the carbohydrates, the total carbohydrates, as low as possible. Don't get caught up on the net carbohydrates. 20 grams or less is the best. If 30 is all you can do, that's fine. Let's start with there. Baby steps. But be aware that there's carbohydrates in just about everything, especially when you think about spices and eggs have carbohydrates. I'm not saying eggs are bad, but like scallops. There's hidden carbohydrates in just about everything. Um, hit your protein goal so you hit about 0.8 times your lean mass. And I'm not saying like, 400 grams of protein, you know? Like, this is a reasonable amount. But most people, women that I work with, are not hitting their protein goal. Why is that? Because of egg fast, because of fat bombs, fat fast, and they just don't like protein. Or they've been a vegetarian or a vegan for a long period of time, and then when they eat protein, they're like, oh, I don't feel good. Yes, 
Your body's very smart. If you don't eat protein for a long period of time, guess what? It stops making protease because it doesn't want to waste its time. So you might need to add in a couple things to help you digest that food again. If you do those two things, you will be in ketosis. You don't need to do shots of MCT oil, okay? You don't need to do, you know, a half a cup of butter on your steak. The steak is enough. Um, fat, it keeps you satiated. So it helps to keep cravings um, and hunger at bay, but don't focus on a percentage. It's, I'm not saying it's bad, but what I read all the time is you need to eat 70% fat to be keto. No, you don't. There's enough fat in a steak to be in ketosis. Um, if you hit your carbs and protein, um, you will be in ketosis regardless of your fat intake. Um, the more dietary fat there is, the less fuel, uh, I'm sorry, the more fuel you, you lose in lipolysis. Lipolysis is that burning of fat that you want to do. That 70% fat includes your body fat, okay? If you want to do the 70% fat thing. Don't forget to drink more water and shoot for about half your body weight in ounces, but adding in electrolytes, um, your body releases a lot of the salt associated when you're eating carbohydrates. This is why you get like heavy legs walking upstairs when you first start keto or a low-carb diet. Um, with all that water loss, when you get rid of carbohydrates, along goes a lot of the water loss. And along goes the electrolytes too. And so you just need to be real cognizant about I even find myself doing this. If you set aside two and a half teaspoons of salt by your cooking vessel, and if you don't use that in what you're eating that day, it's probably not enough. You gotta add it to your water, like the soul water or whatever. But it's really eye-opening how little salt, and how we've been told salt is bad. But don't be afraid of salt. If you're having low energy, that type of stuff, always ask your doctor, right? Um, don't blindly take potassium, especially if you're on blood pressure medication, but be cognizant that magnesium, that type of stuff, magnesium we used to find in our water supply. So it's not like, oh, I tried keto, now I need to take magnesium. Magnesium used to be in our water supply, and just like farmers need to rotate their crops, the water no longer has magnesium in it. And that's why everybody needs to supplement with magnesium. Good quality magnesium, not oxide. You get colon blow. Uh, more tips, befriend the slow cooker. Um, when I adopted two little boys, Craig traveled for work. And here I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going crazy here. The slow cooker was my best friend. Now everybody loves their Instant Pot, but I'm still, I'm still in love with my slow cooker. I like to fill the slow cooker the night before and even in the summertime, because then I can go on a bike ride, kayak, whatever, and I have the slow cooker on during the day. I come home, and especially if your family's intermittent fasting and eating at different times, they can open up that slow cooker and eat whenever they want, you know? Um, planning ahead, whether it be breakfast, um, we do like keto waffles or pancakes, and I freeze them like an Eggo waffle, and then you can just put them in the toaster oven. And my waffles, I don't use any nut flours. So you don't need any nut flour. The weirdest thing is I use hard-boiled eggs to thicken them, and they're delicious, all right? Um, pizza quiches, keto muffins, that type of stuff. You can make them more without nut flours if you want to. Um, lunch, if you're doing a lunch still, pack it when you get home from work. So in the morning, you just take it with you. And even if you don't know if you need it, take it so you don't go to fast food or grab something junky, okay? Um, dinner, prepare for the next night while um, my husband's awesome, so while he was cleaning up, I would prepare dinner for the next night. My kids are awesome, so they help do the dishes all the time, and so then I can focus on getting other meal prep ready while they're helping clean up. Um, and don't be ashamed to ask for substitutes at restaurants. Um, especially in the beginning for me, it was really helpful to have a restaurant menu online so I could see it, be ready, tell myself I'm not going to order the french fries no matter what my friends get, I'm going to get this, and it's all good. Be mentally prepared. Um, results, these are just a few, um, oh, first we'll start with this. Anybody know who that is? It's Halle Berry. <laughs> yes, Halle Berry. I might be the underdog. I'm actually quite an introvert that prefers to be in the woods or in my kayak um, than on stage here, but I do love all you. Um, 
but I'm not super popular on social media, and that's okay because the people that I do work with, I love dearly, and I, um, I want to help. But someone like Halle Berry, she messaged me. She makes my recipes all the time, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I love food, but I also have a very busy lifestyle. And so I'm really good at making delicious recipes, fast and easy, so any busy mom, any busy actress, any busy father can um, do these type of recipes. Um, Valerie Bertinelli, she likes keto comfort foods. If you don't have that book, it's pretty good. The biscuits and gravy are a hit. They make great biscuits, uh, biscuit sandwiches. And Al Roker made my um, low-carb bread on Good Morning America. That was pretty cool. I just wish that he would ask me to be on with him. <laughs> so here's just some testimonies. The coolest thing about these testimonies, um, right now I just got a couple emails of, from people that, I mean, I may have worked with a long time ago. They weren't ready at the time. But emails come in all the time with, weight loss is great, look at these. Some people say, I'm too old to lose weight. 73 and 77 years old. Husband and wife that I worked with. They're now living their life. They feel like they're wasted too much of their life before. Lost 200 pounds. Um, let's see, Ashley lost 254 pounds. Um, lost 150 pounds and gained 20 pounds of muscle, just like uh, Keto Savage was talking about. Um, lost 200 pounds total. And, oh, I, th I thought we had that little boy, that boy that lost all that weight on there, no. Um, type 2 diabetes. A1C went from 10.7. Um, and had my fasting glucose at two, uh, 131 to A1C at 5.0 and glucose at 80. And this is all just by eating real food. These people followed those guidelines that I'm talking about of not adding in the fat, hitting your protein goal, eating real food, don't drink your calories. Um, these are all A1Cs going from 11.1 to 5.1 in three months. You know, like Jillian Michaels, she can bash keto all they want. I don't care. The proof's in the pudding. When my doctor asks what I eat, they're like, oh my gosh. Like, proof's in the pudding. It's all fine. You can't deny these testimonies. Eczema and skin issues. Um, cleared up eczema and uh, miracles for his ADHD a little, a son. Um, eczema, gone. This girl in the corner, um, I remember her mom calling me. Um, her daughter was crying. She was in college that her um, legs were filled with dot, her whole body was just rashes, and that was gone in three days. And of course, there were supplements that went along with that, but food was the big healer. IBS, acid reflux, Crohn's, and colitis. My, 70, uh, my seven-year-old son was diagnosed with Crohn's. I get that all the time. My doctor said I can't do keto because I have diverticulitis, Crohn's, or colitis. If you do it right, you don't need to worry about this. If anything, it's going to heal it. We've got to stay away from the dairy and the nuts. And that's what a lot of people are living on in the keto world. Um, these are just some other testimonies. I'm going to fly by them so I can get to questions instead. But multiple sclerosis, uh, Graves and Parkinson's. Uh, my husband had such, uh, there's no more pain. Um, gosh. Craig usually does these slides for me. He's laughing at me. Um, six months. I'm just going to skip through them. But you can see, they're just awesome. Alzheimer's, mood, autism, ADHD. Um, I suffer from weight, loss or weight gain and depression and anxiety. These are testimonies I love. Because weight loss aside, these are like changing people's lives. You know? No longer depressed. No longer have anxiety. The last place I spoke at, a teenager came up crying to me and she said I would be hospitalized if it weren't for you and little did I know a, a few things of advice that I did online with her you know it really does change your moods it's amazing um, fibro Lyme chronic pain um, since I've been following Maria I no longer have IBS and no longer fibro pain uh, goodbye to migraines asthma joint pain um, sadly, Lyme is something that my family is dealing with now, but thankful to carnivore, um, a couple other things, um, Craig's doing great now. Let's see, off medications. These are cool. Look at that. That's a half of a blood pressure pill, and I should be uh, gone soon. Love it all. Um, 
getting rid of all of these medications. Um, these are a few meds that I no longer have to take since uh, keto in May 2004. That was an older one. Um, but yeah, these testimonies just go on and on. So families, I love these when families do it all together. Because nobody needs that in the house. Kids don't need it. You don't need it. You'll be tempted if you leave it there for your kids. You will be. And they'll be grateful for it later. Um, heart disease. This is one of my keto coaches, um, husband, Lori. In 18 months, he lost over 200 pounds. He was over 400 pounds, and now he's 176. He was facing a kidney transplant. He had three heart attacks, numerous uh, vascular issues, um, testicular cancer survivor. He's strict keto. He doesn't do lazy keto because his life depends on it. There's definitely a lazy keto way of doing things. But, I mean, I'm sorry, I feel kind of lazy for just frying up a steak. It's like three minutes aside, right? Books and services. Um, a lot of you had me sign them here. I'm very, very grateful. Um, I do have quite a few uh, books out already. Um, the Air Fryer book will be out in October. And the carnivore book, they switched it just because it was so detailed. That will be out in December. Um, I do have a free ebook for all of you uh, with meal plans in it if you're interested. It's at my website at mariamindbodyhealth.com. And tell your friends, it's free. We're grateful. Um, my services, I do have the uh, keto courses, I have little cards if you're interested in them. But um, every even tomorrow, we'll be at the airport and we'll have our meetings with everybody. Um, it's all good, but I want to help everybody as I can. But we do that with ketoadapted.com. Um, but if you're looking for something free, I have mariamindbodyhealth.com has over 1,000, 2,000 free recipes, giveaways, tips for you. Um, I do keto coaching, and uh, quite a few of them are here. You could ask them about it if you want. Um, but if you're looking for a coach, I have a lot of coaches, or if you want to become a coach, um, I now do that also. But if anybody has any questions, that's my presentation. Hi, thank you, Maria. Um, thank my you. name is Julie, and uh, I heard you on uh, Keto Connect on your podcast the podcast, that's it, I was really excited to see you. So my question, if it's a question, I'm like, meh, keto, but um, my nephew, who's gonna be nine, was uh, diagnosed with ADHD, and of course, they wanna put him on drugs, and it's a pretty unhealthy family, and my sister-in-law is so resistant to keto. My mom's kind of on keto. She's so mad she's not here, by the way. And she's been baking. And like the first question my sister-in-law says when she brings the yummy, you know, chocolate chip cookies that are keto, are those keto, you know? And, she, and I'm just like, all I said is like, I'm not a mother, I don't have any children, I have no right to say to a parent, hey, why don't you try this? Or not, not try that, but you should do this, you should do that. All I recommended was before you go on the drugs, can you just try to get them off? Because there's just sugar, it's a sugar house ketchup is like, they don't even know that sugar. You know what I'm saying? Oh. So is there a way, like that's the funniest thing, like, you know, uh, what they, anyway. What do you recommend? How can I, I gave them a book, Primal Mind, Primal Body, not read. I need, to, I, I just want to help, I love my nephew, you know, and yeah. I don't want to see him have to go on drugs if he doesn't have to. Sometimes it's easiest to hear it from someone other than family. Um, we're in the trust tree, right? Someone's probably videotaping. Don't show it to my family. But they don't, they don't want to listen. Mm -hmm. And I see that in very close people. They have to hear it from almost someone else. Um, but it would change his life. Mm -hmm. It really would. I see it all the time. And the food is delicious. But here's the thing. I made uh, pancakes at my parents' cabin. Um, I call it a cabin, but it really is like a shack in the north woods of Wisconsin. Like, it's pretty primal. I made pancakes outside on the griddle. My mom, okay, Maria made her pancakes. I don't know if anybody's going to like them. They're healthy. <laughs> now nobody will. 
you know, but just make them. Hey, are my pancakes good? <laughs> They're good. You just don't say anything. And whether you can talk to her about it, but you, I think the problem comes that the parents are addicted to it too. Absolutely. She wants it. Absolutely. Because if she wouldn't mind changing, then she would do it. Can I also just say really quick, my nephew, we were waiting that last week, so luckily there's lots of steaks, but um, my mom made these blueberry muffins and my nephew actually asked mom, her, his mom, if he could have one of grandma's muffins. She said no. Whoa. Yeah, so that's what we're dealing with. She doesn't with. want to change. No. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, Maria. I'm Hi, Regina. Hey. Hey. Anyway, I just want to say thank you for all of your dedication and work that you've done to help the keto population. And whenever I found out that you went to Russia, that just touched my heart because my son has epilepsy and seizures. And I've, I've really, really have admired you for all of your inspiration. And I just want to say thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. Hi, Maria. I'm, I've been doing keto for about 10 months, and I'm about 85 pounds. Um, my mother has been diagnosed with cancer. She had colon cancer, and she had her colon removed, or part of her colon, and she's on the gastric bag. I'm trying to get her to do some of the keto stuff. I do have her on CBD now, finally, but the doctors keep on telling her, no, don't do keto. It's not good for you. How can I convince her to try to help her out a little bit more? If she would be open to seeing some of the testimonies of cancer that's one of the biggest I mean we saved everyone all of our testimonies and if she would be inspired by reading some but I think that's the problem there's so much like I showed you the keto slim fast yeah like it's... the word keto is getting ruined by these products mm -hmm. but if she ate real food she, she would do great but well, she's nervous about what she can eat being on the colostomy bag too oh so I actually a have a family bit. member that deals with it, so it's just a little bit different, you know? Okay. But, yeah. Thank I'm you. sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I've been wanting to talk to you for a long time. <laughs> all right, so I follow you like crazy on you everywhere. I want to say how much I thank you because I've lost 165 pounds yeah! since meeting you. And my biggest thing with keto is I have to do it a little different, just like everybody else. I have a tick-borne disease, not Lyme, but I have alpha-gal, which makes it really hard to eat pork, okay? I want to know, with people with alpha-gal, can that be reversed with keto also? Um, wow, those dang ticks I ruin know. a lot of lives. Um, have you tried beef bacon? I eat turkey bacon, and I haven't tried beef bacon. I am curious to try. I have an EpiPen, but I know that Whole Foods carries an organic grass-fed pork. I have found that I can eat organic grass-fed beef and not have a problem, because normally I have to stick to just poultry and fish, but I'm finding with organic grass-fed, so it means there's something in the meat. So it makes me wonder if I tried that pork, but I'm afraid. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know how to answer that one. I'm sorry. Okay. But I'm curious. <laughs> but I'm still proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Mo, and Hi. I'm a high school teacher. Awesome. I am uh, 40 days on keto, lost 25 pounds. <laughs> one thing is changing my life. I'm calm. I'm full of energy. Since you mentioned you have kids, how do I promote my students? Because all they eat is chips, chips, chips. Yeah. Without losing my certification. <laughs> how do I promote, well, how do I get them to, because everything I have, everything I cook, I learned from you guys. Thank I'll you. I'll put it on my Instagram page. But those are adults and mainly back home in Iran, Farsi speakers. But with kids, it's kind of on the edge. Especially with this, the district. Oh, yeah. Um, well, starting them young is important. You know, I'm lucky that that's all my kids really know. Um, but you're setting such a good example. I mean, look at your, like, you know, you're healthy. I don't want to dive into it too deeply, but it took Craig a little while to follow me on this journey. But just leading by example, pretty soon he's like, I want in on this. 
And if you lead by example, they'll want in on this. Um, as for doing a lesson, I don't know if you can, you know, legally do that, but. So basically, I explain why I'm not having too much fruits and vegetables and real food, right? Real food, real okay. food, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank Tell you. them that, you know, like you want to be like a dinosaur. We talk about that. My kids love dinosaurs. They love, you know, the T-Rex. He's a carnivore, right? I don't know how old the, you said high school. High school, yeah. Oh, they probably wouldn't care about that. But, <laughs> you know, I think it's cool to be like a carnivore and teach them maybe, I don't know if they could do this, but you can't deny the facts about um, our paleo, you know, um, the Neanderthals and the nitrogen in their bones show that they were, they ate meat, more meat than what the wolves ate, than what the woolly mammoth, like they ate big animals and a lot of them, that's primarily what they ate. So you're telling the truth there. I don't know. Thank you. You're welcome. I think I'm done. Thank you everybody for coming.